This one I can talk about forever. <laughs> My first job in the art world was at Sotheby's, but I left pretty quickly and I opened a little space. Being a gallery was really what drove me. A gallery's relationship with an artist is that they're there for that artist in good times and bad times. Galleries historicize the work, they research the work, and they also build an artist's career. So for me, the ADAA really does represent a peer group that is committed to standards. There is a consistency of excellence from very young galleries now to galleries that have been in business for decades upon decades. An artist's career goes up and down, and as a gallery, you go through it. As an art dealer, as a gallery, we have our responsibility for life. My first art sale was um, from our first show. We opened in 1983 in the East Village with a one-person show of an artist named Sue Ko. And we sold out that show. My first job in the art world was working on a Saturday at a gallery in Houston, Texas. I started thinking, I love this. My very first art sale, I think, was the David Hockney Weather Series prints. We started Sporny Westwater Fisher in, 19, uh, in the fall of 1975. Uh, now that was also a, a time when um, actually Gerald Ford said to the city in a famous splash, uh, basically New York City dropped dead. So it wasn't, let's say, the most auspicious time to start the gallery. My first art sale was when I was working at Paula Cooper Gallery, which was um, really exciting. I have never sold a painting before, and, um, and it just happened. I don't really have a career path. Um, you know, I, it was more like I loved art, and I loved American art. You know, art's always been my passion, and that curiosity is really what's kept me going. And I love connecting people with art. I remember one of the very first conversations I had with Paula when I was in the process of talking to her about working with her. She was very adamant, very clear in stating that, you know, her job, the gallery's job, was to work for the artists. Listen, we're not doing organ transplants here. But the most important thing is that the artist is able to put on the show that he or she really wants. I feel I have a strong responsibility to investigate and build research on Asian American artists. When you work with artists, it's, it's really the alchemy between the gallerist and, and the artist that created the magic. I'll never forget the day that I got a phone call from Roland Augustine, who was president of the ADAA at the time. I felt at that moment that my voice had been heard, it was respected, and I understood that my contributions to this field and to this association were worthwhile. The ADAA has uh, a wonderful reputation, and I think it represents integrity. The ADAA also is very philanthropic and does a lot of really wonderful things, so I admire that a great deal. When I was accepted in the ADAA, it meant validation, and it meant camaraderie. And I was so proud to be an early member of the association, and I still am. When I was accepted, it was probably one of the highest um, point of my career. I'm very proud to be part of this. The beauty of the gallery world is the care and precision with which the owners both work with and associate the career of the artist. And the placement, the tracking, and the care or love that goes into a sale and the monitoring of its life as it makes its way through the history of time is something that only a gallery can do. A gallerist is somebody who is, has to be so many things. The world has changed. We cannot just do what we did before. I think we should do more collaborate together. It's beneficial to everybody. The, the job of a gallerist 
Many of these attributes of what I think the job is are ones that you can't always measure in dollars and cents. Well, I do think that one of the wonderful things that we've seen over the past five to 10 years has been you know, an embracing of voices that weren't necessarily, not new, but voices that weren't necessarily heard in the art world. And so I would imagine that will continue and grow. If you think of art as something sacred, and you think of dealing as something profane, the two seem antithetical. What I came to realize through my interactions with the ADAA is the reality that these two things are actually integral to one another. What's the difference between the business of art in a gallery and in an auction house? They call it property and we call it art. What I realized was that there were a whole bunch of people who thought exactly as I did. <laughs>